Alright, ladies and gents, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a video about my vapor engine experiment, and people are starting to wonder. I've been uh, having a few comments about people saying things like, you know, oh, they've got him, you know, like this guy must have got whacked. I haven't seen any videos, you know, someone must have found him, this guy must be dead. So I enjoy reading your comments, but uh, no, all is uh, good and well. Um, and like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an update. Now, I'm going to be frank. I haven't been very proactive with this. Uh, I've kept my finger on the pulse. I've kind of been looking into things and doing research every now and then. But to be perfectly honest, uh, I haven't done a lot. But I have done some stuff. Uh, a lot of what I had spoken about in my previous videos. Um, so I'll just give you guys a bit of an update. And um, yeah, just want to... You know, give you guys some uh, some content on this stuff because people have been asking, you guys have been commenting and, you know, asking questions. You've been, you know, interested in this idea. People telling me about the things that they've built and the experiments they've done and what they're doing. Uh, plenty of cars, even some motorbikes. And um, the thing that I always tell people is one, I bloody love it. It's awesome to hear. I'm excited. But here's the thing take video footage like show us the stuff like it's one thing to talk about it and maybe send a couple of photos but send a video like even if you don't speak english or even if you know you've just got a, a crappy camera or just a phone whatever you got send something because i love to see that and other people love to see that too so but anyways like i say I'll, I'll show you what i'm up to so you guys uh may remember this car uh, from the my well, at the time of this video, it's my latest video uh, about where we cut all cut it all up and that sort of thing. Um, but anyways, I'll leave that for the time being. I'll show you what I've got going on here. So, if anyone is new to the concept, I'm going to run you through some stuff. If you know this stuff, just bear with me, guys. So, the idea is that uh, petrol engines. Uh, run off a liquid that's being sprayed into the you know um, intake or into directly into the cylinder. Uh, obviously, when you've got a carburetor, this car the carb carbureted, so obviously it's spraying it. You know, you'd always call it kind of the intake where it's spraying a, a you know a relatively well, I suppose compared to EFI, it's not, but a fine uh, fuel. But what's happening is as that fuel is being sprayed in. It's what is vaporized or what vapor comes off that liquid that's actually being burnt inside the engine. And everything of that liquid that doesn't become in a gaseous state then comes out through your exhaust and is meant to be burnt up by a catalytic converter. And that's part of the whole, that's part of the whole, um, you know, doing better for the economy and the emission stuff and keeping everything clean is that so much fuel and unburnt stuff plus these days they put heaps of different chemicals and there's a whole science to it to making fuel do what it does and it's a lot of bad things actually uh not what they tell us which you know they say fuel is getting better and stuff it's really not even though the science has progressed but i'm getting off topic <clears throat> so typically they say these engines get about sorry a, a standard petrol engine you're actually getting about a 30 percent efficiency now, that's essentially saying what you're putting in there, that fuel that you're putting in, 30% of it is burning, 30% of it is becoming gaseous, the vapor that's coming off that is running your engine, and, th and then the other, obviously, 70% or so, uh, is not getting burnt and is getting burnt mostly in your catalytic converter, and what it's not done there gets sent out, you know, your exhaust uh, and into the world. When we're talking about vapor, uh, the idea is that when you burn a gas, when you burn a vapor, you're burning a huge percent of it. it it's virtually a hundred percent. You know, I've heard blokes talk about like you know ninety nine point like eight, ninety nine point seven. It's it's a very high percentage of that that actually gets burnt as soon as it enters into the uh, into the combustion chamber and, and then obviously does its thing. Uh, similarly, where you have LPG. It, it's a similar thing. That's gas, and it's you know being used, um, and you get you know, um, you know that. But this is kind of a little bit of a different thing. But anyway, so that's a, that's a little bit of the idea. So what we're trying to do here is make something 
that turns your liquid petrol into the gaseous state. Uh, and there's plenty of ways to do that. There's lots of options, there's lots of pros and cons. How hot do you get the petrol? Do you mix it with anything? How hot is your air intake when it mixes with the fuel? Do you want to do it in your car be as close as you can? Do you want to do it further away? There's plenty of things out there. Um, but in this video a little bit later on, I'll show you, well, more I'll tell you, uh, a bunch of really good resources I've found and people um, that are kind of doing this stuff and have a, a really good idea and it'll give you some good ideas too as you build and fabricate your own system. But I'll run you through this. So inside here, I'll see if I can get this out. Oh, geez. Right, so we just got obviously a, a pod filter and that's just a piece of uh, aluminium tube. And what that does is that pipe, that length there, goes into the bottom of this canister. Uh, it's a bit banged up at the moment, but you can see the edge, the edge there. And it goes down to about there, you know, 10, 20 mil from the, um, from the bottom. And now on the inside, we'll see if we can get any light in there. You can see a little bit of something in there. Anyways, what that is, in the bottom of that container we have steel wool, stainless steel steel wool that's important and that goes in there and surrounds the whole bottom of that thing you pour petrol in there um, you know somewhere essentially you just have to be higher than where, what that pipe does when it goes inside of there right so you have your petrol in there you know say 30 40 50 mil something like that and then as your engines running <clears throat> as your engines running because it's it's essentially a air pump yeah that's what the engine pretty much is that's obviously our carburetor air intake. This is our air intake. This tube just sits down only about, say, 10 mil, 20 mil from the top. Now, as the engine's running, it's sucking air in like a vacuum, yeah? So this, this tube is sucking air from this whole thing, but the air intake is from this pipe that sits down to the bottom. So as it's sucking in that air, it's drawing the air down underneath the petrol, and as it's pulled up from the vacuum that's created from the top here, it creates bubbles and it starts to move and get agitated and rumbles and gets hot. Um, and, and, and that's kind of what you want, right? So that's kind of the concept. Now the hotter you get your petrol though, the better, the more vapor it produces. And I'll get into the technicals of that in a moment. But um, what I have here uh, with this, so with these tubes here that you can see, what I've done is I've tapped into the coolant line. Uh, that's from, yeah, that's the hot side. It goes in, cools down as it goes to the bottom and then comes out. Obviously I've tapped into that with this uh, very dodgy looking thing and I can adjust obviously the flow there. And what it does is it pumps hot water through this little contraption into that bucket. And then what it does in here is about, from memory about eight, eight to 10 coils all the way around or along the perimeter of the bucket down to the bottom and then comes back up from this tube and then this one you can see ties in oh it gets a bit dark in there but then ties into where the um, you know the cold side where the intake is where it goes into the block uh into the block yeah into the block or you know something along those lines um so what that does is obviously you get hot water inside there uh where the petrol is then heated slowly as the engine gets hotter and as the coolant runs in there for longer. And the more hot you get that petrol, the more vapor it produces, and uh, you're obviously gonna you know, have more fuel, because we're using the, uh, the vapor, not the liquid. So the more you heat up, the more fuel you kind of have available too. And then again, sucked in through this pipe, and then here, it uh, it's not on here at the moment, but I had a valve as well. Uh, which would pretty much control my you know fresh air intake so i have obviously my fuel intake my air intake and i'll just adjust uh you know that valve to get that roughly right and yeah it, it runs um i haven't done any economy testing yet um because it's still pretty dodgy uh and to do an economy test the, the truest test you could do is to actually drive it around so before i actually take it uh, on the road, obviously I can't take this car on the road. Before I take a system on the road, uh, is a fair bit of work, obviously you can't have plastic bits sticking out of your thing like that. 
But what I am going to do is uh, do a minor test where I essentially, you know, have, what I'll do is, um, we've got the fuel ball here. What I'll do is instead of having the fuel um, pumped from the tank, I'll disconnect this line and I'll run it into uh, like a, some type of container, a, a long narrow container and I have a certain amount of fuel in there, you know, say 500 milliliters or something and burn that. I'll just let the car idle, right? And I won't touch it and I'll see how long it takes for it to burn that fuel. Then I'll do the same thing, but with a vapor system, uh, you know, put the same amount of fuel in a container or whatever I do, see how long it lasts for. And that'll give me the first glimpse of an idea. But of course, a car sitting there idling, you know, yeah, it gives you a bit of an idea, but of course you want to really drive it around and see. But then of course, at the same time, when you're driving it around, you're at different conditions. You know, you're going to go on different kinds of roads, different traffic. You're going to drive harder, not so hard. Are you going to cruise? You know, so there's that. So I um, I will get to something like that eventually. So stay tuned for that. <clears throat> so now I want to talk to you about something uh, a little bit uh, different or like I mentioned before, the technical stuff. Um, and this is where... People can understand the concept pretty easy, and I'm sure they could build something pretty easy, but it's about the details about what really kind of makes it work. What are the critical uh, factors that you need to take into consideration? So here's a few things. First thing is you have something called a flash point. A flash point, now I'm not a bloody scientist, so I'm not gonna give you the bloody perfect definition, but you know, this is kind of in the context of what we're doing here. A flash point is the temperature that a substance, I think it's liquids or anything, uh, begin to release uh, some type of vapor, right? Uh, certain things, certain fluids, you know, release vapors at low temperatures, certain uh, at, you know, ambient temperatures, and some at very high temperatures. Petrol happens to have a, a relatively low flash point, which means uh, the, the temperature, the ambient temperature doesn't need to be, sorry, not the ambient, the temperature of the fluid doesn't need to be very high before it starts releasing vapors. Now, a bit of a side note, I've started to compile a playlist that shows lots of great content regarding this whole concept. There's plenty of crap stuff out there. There's a little bit of good stuff. You kind of have to go through it all, but I've started to compile a playlist which pretty much has great chemistry videos, people doing awesome things, uh, HHO inject, uh, not injection, you know, using um, HHO, um, hydrogen, uh, and then other vapor guys, but I'm trying to keep it to like the good stuff, not the stuff where they kind of do something you don't really know really what's going on. So if you want to find more, look for my video playlist somewhere on my channel, you'll be able to find that. Check out uh, those videos there, and I'm going to continue to add to that as I find other people putting out really good quality content regarding. So going back, um, petrol has a very low. Now, don't quote me on it, but from memory, it's about 50, uh, negative 50 degrees Celsius where petrol starts to, uh, where that's its flash point, which means any time that liquid is above that temperature, it's starting to release vapor. Now, again, in that in that um, playlist is a great video that will get you to watch. It's something about chemistry of fire or something. It's like this video from like 1960s or something. It's like early when, you know, videos were even invented. Um, anyways, they show a video where you cannot light petrol if it's below 50 degrees, right? Because it's not and they show it in the video, it's not the liquid that's burning, but rather the gas or the vapor that's coming off that liquid that then gets burnt. So if you see them, or if you light a, um, you know, a small ball of petrol, and you light that, you'll see in a glass container, you'll see there's actually a little gap between there. Same thing with a fire, even, like a wood fire. If you have a close look, there's actually a gap between the flame and the timber because the timber is getting so hot or the wood whatever is getting so hot that it's breaking down and it's releasing gas and that's actually what's lighting so there's a few, there's a few interesting things for you to check out so petrol is negative 50 and you can light it the higher that you get that temperature the more that that same amount of liquid of petrol the more that it's going to vaporize therefore the more 
fuel here have access to because again we're not trying we're not we're not caring about liquid petrol but rather the gaseous petrol so petrol has an auto ignition point of about 250 degrees celsius which that that means auto ignition point uh, is the temperature which a substance will reach before it auto ignites it doesn't need ignition obviously when they talk about fire or, or flame or whatever um, to a fuel you need air and you need heat or ignition right so you can ignite something um, at a lower temperature because you have that ignition but without the ignition if something gets to a hot enough temperature it will auto ignite the heat from it is enough to make it go and again like with a flash point all different kinds of substances whether it be a liquid or a you know whatever have different temperatures again don't quite be you know exactly on all this stuff but this is just to give you a really good idea petrol at 250 degrees celsius before it auto ignites which means as long as you're keeping that petrol under say 230 degrees say at, at a maximum yeah say 200 to 230 then you're in a pretty safe place now of course you can burn yourself it's, it's dangerous in that sense but it's not going to auto ignite and obviously you need to be careful of having ignition um, but you know that's kind of the idea so what and and by heating it up that much you're going to get more vapor for less fuel because that fuel is releasing more vapor so that's a couple of things for you you're trying to heat up your fuel nice and hot and that's where a lot of people are talking about different stuff like what i've done with my cores my bucket other people have like on the big ford like f-150s f-250s that sort of thing in the states um, those cars have heat exchangers which heats up the air as it's coming in to help with combustion for when it's really cold like you know um, you know below freezing that sort of stuff um, as a part of the not it's not part of the choke but it's part of the you know like a choke to help it to run smooth while it's really cold until it heats up they have a heat exchanger people take those heat exchangers instead of um, you know heating up the air they heat up liquids petrol uh, and do this kind of stuff so the aim of the game is try and heat up your petrol in a safe way um, then you want to obviously contain that but you want to contain the least amount of vapor as possible for safety reasons you know in case something were to happen you don't want to have a, a big container full of gas like what mine is that's what like I'm saying it's just a concept it's dangerous so you want to heat it up really hot in a small area essentially you're trying to produce only enough vapor that your engine needs that's the tricky part it's easier to just heat up a whole container and have plenty of fuel in there uh, and the engine consumes what it needs but the trick is and safety with safety is to heat it up so that it gets hot very quickly and then goes into your engine and you're only producing enough vapor that your engine needs as you're going through your rev range so that's a, a bit of stuff for you um like i say plenty of really good uh information in those really old school chemistry videos i was talking about in that playlist but um that's kind of it um i just wanted to like i say give you guys a bit of an update uh, let you know that things are still going good um so yeah by the way guys i, I really love it when you comment i think i mentioned that earlier because I love this kind of stuff. I'm passionate about it. I think it's super interesting, the whole conspiracy theory of it all. Um, but to also prove the theory, that is a really cool thing. So other people looking to do that, I love it when they do. So let me know what you're doing, guys. Let me know if you're making stuff, if you're building stuff. Of course, I get a ton of questions, people that are commenting uh, on my videos or they're getting in contact with me in other ways. They're always asking questions on what they can do, how they should do this, how they should do that. Um, so yeah, let me know. I'm going to help you out as best I can. But like you, I'm learning. So that's all for me for now, guys. Hope you uh, enjoyed this video. I know I talked a lot. Um, but like I said, there's not a heap of videos that really show this kind of content. So hope that helps, guys. And uh, keep experimenting. Have a good one.